Now, the pandemic made, I mean, everybody's unhappy with this, but the pandemic really forced the GP and the Victorian government's hand, didn't it? Well, I suspect so. I don't know the details and the government is not telling us, but uh, I suspect it's partly pandemic. Uh, the other thing, Michael, it was stupid scheduling the Grand Prix for November. That is two weeks after our spring racing carnival. And these major events require Corporate Australia's sponsorship. There is no way Corporate Australia was going to be able to afford and get benefit from two major events, one after the other. It would have been better to postpone it until its regular spot early next year in March or April. But it's, a, it, it's just profoundly disappointing that everyone says, let's come out of this uh, pandemic, uh, let's give and return economic activity, let's give people something to enjoy, and yet here we are again, shrinking. Victoria is literally shrinking uh, within its own community. And I, I, it's profoundly disappointing. But we still have, and, and everybody wants to come out of this as soon as possible, and Britain's about to move to what it's called Freedom Day in a couple of weeks' time. But we still have in this country only 9% of the population, the adult population, fully vaccinated. It'd just be dangerous, wouldn't it, allowing so many people to come in for such a big event? Well, again, if you're talking about the drivers and their crew, we should, we have a national cabinet. They should come together and develop what I would call a protocol that says, for instance, if uh, Serena Williams wants to come to the Tennis Open next year, and I'm particularly worried about the Tennis Open next year because that is the major sporting event in Australia. If Serena wants to come here and she's had a vaccination, and if she's tested negative 24 hours before she comes, arrives and is tested again negative, she should be able to go about the community like any of us. Uh, we have no protocols for this. You might have heard yesterday or last week, the mm. Premier went to Canberra, to National Cabinet and said, we've got to reduce the number of people coming into this country. And yesterday, they used that as an excuse for the cancellation of the Grand Prix, that we can't get people into the country. You can't have your cake and eat it. As we all know, the only way this virus, sadly, is getting into the community is through hotel quarantine leaks. And we're also talking about the Australian Open. OK, Serena Williams might have half a dozen uh, in her entourage. We're talking about close to 2,000 people involved in the Grand Prix. So international rival caps are there for a reason, are they? Just to stop the outbreak spreading? Yes, but, Michael, what we haven't done is tried to work out how we can do things better. Now, quite clearly, your previous interview, we need to be vaccinated. Mm. But if those people, if it was all of the Grand Prix people, if it was all of those who might come to the tennis from overseas, if they were vaccinated, fully vaccinated, and if they were tested before they left their point of departure and were found to be negative, there's no reason they should not be able to come here to play tennis or to participate in a Grand Prix. The trouble is, we are so locked in, we show no flexibility whatsoever. And that rule of being vaccinated and then tested and being negative should apply to Australians coming home. We are simply saying, and it's led by a couple of our premiers who say, look, we can't handle hotel quarantine. Lock our borders totally. There's got to be a more flexible way of doing it. So those poor people associated with these major events, and it's not just the athletes, it's the people who provide the catering. It's the people yeah. who ma maintain the stands. We are losing. We are losing so much economic activity. We are depressing the community. And of course, we're destroying our reputation as the sporting capital, not only of Australia, but of the world in terms of what we've been able to offer in the past. We cannot continue down this path that just says, until everyone's vaccinated, we're going to close our borders. Because by, by that time, whenever it is, Victoria will be the rust bucket of Australia yet again, as we were in the late 80s and early 90s. There is a better way of doing this. But we can't, we can't open our borders when the uh, vaccination rate, the full vaccination no. rate, still stands at 9%, can we? No, no one's suggesting that. No, M Michael, Michael, I, with due respect, you're not listening. If people are vaccinated from where they are coming and they're tested negative, then they sh we should have a protocol that allows them in. If they're mm. fully vaccinated, tested, 
negative, arrive here, tested again negative. Why can't we let them in? You the can country, still transmit the virus sake. when you're fully vaccinated. Have... That's 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 one problem. Pardon? You can still potentially transmit the, the virus. You can full you can oh, potentially yeah, still yeah. transmit the virus even though you're fully vaccinated. That's the problem. Yes, I I understand that, but that's the same argument you get with some of these vaccinations that it might give you blood clots. The reality is the risk is minuscule, right? Are we going to avoid risk and just have zero? Uh, infection for the rest of time. That's not what the rest of the world is doing. It's not what they're doing in Britain. We're going to have this virus potentially with us, you know, for years, maybe mm. the rest of time. If you had to lay uh, odds on the Australian Tennis can't... Open, if you had to lay odds on the Australian Tennis Open, show triple January is still going on at this stage in July, what would they be? Oh, Michael. <laughs> uh, look, I hope it's 50 50. We got through it this year. Uh, a great deal of effort by the organisers and they're to be congratulated. Uh, I hope it goes ahead, but I suspect if it doesn't, and I don't know why the government isn't telling us the real reasons why the Grand Prix hasn't gone ahead, but I suspect a lot of the leading tennis players will not submit themselves to another 14 days in quarantine. Mm. So unless we have a more flexible protocol or unless we get vaccinated, I mean, then I think there's a real risk the tennis open will be either reduced in size or cancelled. I hope it doesn't happen, but we can't go on the way we're doing now. And if in fact you allowed Victorians or New South Welsh people to return to the country having been vaccinated and tested negative, there's an incentive there for all of us to get vaccinated. For goodness sake, we mm. all want to fly within Australia and move freely. We, we want, want to move everywhere. To but, move overseas. But what, so I just want to that's, uh, that's ask right. you, I mean, how, how do you rate the vaccine uh, performance, the rollout performance of the federal government at this stage? Well, the, there's been issues of supply, firstly. Yep. Uh, there's been issues of transportation. It hasn't been good. It hasn't been good. I... It's so confusing, and I don't like the way we put down one vaccine over another. With everything we do, even standing here with this interview, there's a risk that the communication will break down as it did. There is no... There's nothing we can do in life that is totally risk-free. So we need to encourage our community to take the vaccine, we need to have the supply, and we need to ensure that the community as a whole understand that the only way we're going to be able to move freely around our country or travel overseas is to get vaccinated. Hey, before you go, uh, we've all seen the explosive allegations this week relating to the Victorian gaming regulator and claims it hasn't properly uh, policed criminal conduct at Crown Casino. The Victorian Liberal opposition is calling for a fresh inquiry into the regulator. Firstly, do you support that? And going back to uh, you in government when uh, Crown was given its licence in the 90s, shouldn't there have been tougher regulations or a regulatory framework set up from the get-go? Well, the, the framework was there. There was nothing wrong with the framework. The question is whether the framework has actually been exercised. And the second part of it, Michael, is the performance of those who were on the board at Crown and some of the senior officers. I have not seen anything like I am hearing and reading uh, at this inquiry at the moment. It is appalling. It is shocking. It is unacceptable. And there is no way that those who are still on the board or the senior officers in Crown should be employed. In many cases, it's not just neglect, failed governance, it's fraud. It's fraud. And I, you know, I'm, I'm as confounded and confronted and upset as I think uh, Commissioner Finkelstein is. We haven't seen or heard anything like this, which has just been a total rorting of the standards and the expectations and good governance. Uh, I feel sorry for the CEO who's just been employed because he's not been part of what's happened historically. And I don't know what the commissioner is going to come down, what his finding will be, but I hope that he'll give the new CEO uh, the opportunity to rebuild good governance and good practices, because the people I feel very sorry for, there are thousands of people employed at Crown. It is the largest single employer in Victoria. 
Uh, and it's not just in gaming, it's all the other things yep. that Crown is. And I feel very sorry for them. So mm. it's one thing to say, all right, remove its licence. And based on the evidence, that is probably highly justifiable. The other alternative is to say, yes, it's been unacceptable. There will be fines applied. There may be directions given to remove board members and mm. senior staff, but give the operation uh, the opportunity to start again okay. under greater scrutiny, under greater leadership. Got to go. Jeff Kennett, really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.